For the purposes of Northern Illinois, Husqvarna has utterly failed. Steel has not had this failure, and that is why they are the people that I have to do business with. Catch me on the flip side with this, because Husqvarna saws are smoother, they're faster, they're more joy to run, but they just don't work right. How can you run a business on saws that won't start and won't stay running? I had a steel 362 that was vibrating way too much. The vibration on that saw was bad enough that my hands felt numb at the end of the day. I did the research on it, I looked it up, and some people said Husqvarna chainsaws don't vibrate as much. So I went and I looked and there was actually one on discount. The Husqvarna chainsaw just vibrated less. It was a 576 XP. I still have that chainsaw to this day. And the lesser vibration I liked so much that I didn't mind the extra weight of the saw. I knew that Husqvarna had this reputation for sterling quality, just like steel. So once I had one and it was working fine, I thought, hey, wow, these things are fair game. It's comfortable to run, it vibrates less, it's fast, it's got good power, and the chain is really good. I like the chain, Husqvarna X-Cut. Started using, like, a lot, those Husqvarna. Let's move forward to after I got into Husqvarna. I bought a 550 which was a Mark I, that's a small, so that's the first pro level, which is equivalent to a 261. And it never ran right from the factory, but I didn't know it. I just knew when you first started the saw, you always had to nurse it to life. And then, like, once it would be running, it was fine. And then I bought a 562, and I thought, man alive, this is it right here. The power, the speed, it's amazing. Both of those saws, within a year and a half of me purchasing them, had problems to the point where I was spending money on parts. I couldn't get the support that I needed to get them repaired around here. I took the one saw into the shop that I bought it from and they told me like, oh, it needs a full engine rebuild. You should just buy another saw. And I'm flabbergasted. A year and a half of normal use, everything done to it correctly, maintenance and everything, and I have to buy another saw? I don't know about this. And then after I had spent, like I said, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars trying to make these saws run correctly, I finally was like fed up. I said, this is enough. I'm not doing this anymore. I don't know why the saw won't run. One of them went to the scrapyard. One of them went to a friend. Husqvarna around here is not your friendly neighborhood chainsaw dealer. They're far away. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit type of deal. I still have these items right here. These are all Husqvarna. The 576 is the gold standard of all the Huskies that I've had. This chainsaw just works. It's got little issues here and there, but I just buy the Husqvarna parts, the chains. I've never had a running problem that it didn't just go away on its own. And that's an auto-tune saw. I have had this pole saw for a while. Inside the back here, there's a spring that always fails. I was waiting for that part. It was on back order. And while I was waiting for my back ordered part, I went ahead and bought a steel pole saw because I needed a pole saw. So now this is my backup. Everybody knows this pole saw is better to run than a steel. It doesn't make the noises, it doesn't vibrate. It's not irritating and it's lighter. I actually had to replace the reservoir on this that was damaged. It doesn't have a really big hook, like the steel has a big hook. And this thing, this plastic thing always tends to break. This isn't a very reliable system. But the whole pole saw kind of holds together where the steel one is kind of self-destructing. I don't know, but I, I haven't been as happy with the steel. This is a good pole saw. This backpack blower, it's a Red Max, but they sell it as a Husqvarna tool, and that is a good machine. I had some issues with it. The guy at the local store put a new carburetor and a couple other things that were just knockoff parts and got it back up to A1 running condition, and it blows better than any other backpack blower, including my steels. But it is a very big, heavy, bulky thing. This, I won't get rid of. I'll just run it and run it and run it forever until it doesn't work anymore, and then I'm done. I'm not gonna deal with Red Max and Husky. I don't care if it's the best blower, if the service sucks. This bad boy, I just bought and it's already faded, but the reason is I've kept it outside for so long. The reason I chose this chainsaw over the steel is it was a little bit cheaper to buy this. This is an old model. I'm assuming they'll be coming out with a new model in the next couple years, but this is a carbureted version. It's been around for a long time. And I just basically figured, since it wasn't auto-tuned, I was probably not gonna have a lot of issues with it. And I was right, the chainsaw just works. It works how it's supposed to. But it was the most expensive thing I have, probably $3,000 for the whole setup, I can't remember, but it's probably a $2,000 saw and then the bar was like 600. It's a big boy. It's a lot of work to use.
As a business owner, the calculation is that I can't afford to have my guys on the job site pulling a cord on a saw that won't start. I can easily sidestep that problem by just running steel chainsaws. I've never had steel saws that wouldn't start. Really, auto-tune saws are terrible. You really shouldn't have something with a computer controlling the carburetor because now the carburetor is like 130 or something crazy comes with the computer. I like not having to adjust the carburetor, it's pretty cool, but if the computer's not working, there's nothing you can do that doesn't involve plugging it into a proprietary computer software that the, the company basically controls. Husqvarna, I don't know why, the chainsaws are still made in Sweden, but the support is not there, guys. If you live next to an awesome dealer that takes care of you, they have a good relationship with the representative in your area for Husqvarna, then you're probably fine. But I don't have that in my area. My area is steeped in steel. 20 minutes, I could go to probably 10 steel dealers, okay? I can get my parts within a week. It's not a struggle. Back order parts is not an issue except for certain like uh, pro saws. Husqvarna, dude, like everything is on back order all the time. And allegedly they switched over their system to make everything more reliable and better and they put it all in a different warehouse. They couldn't find anything in their warehouse while they were moving their stuff to the new warehouse. That doesn't make any sense to me. How many parts could there possibly be? Anyway, the work wasn't being done right. This is America we're talking about, which is completely devolved into the lowest common denominator of human ability. So I will say that where we are in this country, unfortunately, I don't know what's happened to society, but the individuals who are responsible with those tasks clearly were not up to the job. Be that as it may, this is the failure of Husqvarna. Steel has not had this failure, and that is why they are the people that I have to do business with. But catch me on the flip side with this, because Husqvarna saws are smoother, they're faster, they're more joy to run, but they just don't work right. How can you run a business on saws that won't start and won't stay running? The real warranty is that it works the way it's supposed to, and it doesn't give up. So as far as I'm concerned, the warranty is quality with steel, because steel has quality. It's synonymous with quality in the industry. There are some issues, okay? There's, everybody knows there's some issues with steel, but they, I just, it just hasn't been my experience. I have never had a steel chainsaw that said, it's time to stop working now. So at the end of the day, I'm not gonna buy another Husky. It's just never gonna happen, dude. For the purposes of Northern Illinois, Husqvarna has utterly failed. You are not gonna find anybody out here saying, oh, my Husqvarna, everything in my fleet is a Husqvarna because you can't get proper service. You can't even order the part online. Everything is back ordered all the time. Why would you do business with a company like that? Husqvarna is probably great in Sweden, probably great in Germany and Europe, I don't know, but they're not great here. That's all I got to say about that, guys. I hope this helps you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I understand I was mad on this video, but this is me sharing my experiences with you. Have a great day.